Good evening. My name is Arlene Herson. The name of the show is Getting to Know You, and that's exactly what we're going to do. Tonight, we're going to get to know a man who has been described as a phenomenon, and it's true. His ability to sing, dance, and act has won him awards in every category. He received a Tony Award for his role in Pippin, a Tony nomination for his part in Jesus Christ Superstar, seven Emmy Awards for his television special, the Television Critics Award for Best Actor for his performance as Chicken George in Roots, and that's just the beginning. He's a movie star, a television star, a multifaceted performer, and a humanitarian. He is a phenomenon. He is Ben Vereen, and let's get to know him. Welcome to Getting to Know You. <laughs> he did that very well. Oh, well, and I don't even think I did you justice. <laughs> there are so many things you can do. You are a phenomenon. And everything you do, you, you do so well. Your dancing is legendary. But you were brought up in the Bedford-Stuyvesant section of Brooklyn, a rough and tough neighborhood. Did you get any flack when you were studying dancing at that time as a child from your friends? Well, first of all, I want to clear up the myth about Brooklyn. I don't think Brooklyn is any more rough and tough than any other neighborhood within the cities. Uh, or, or in the suburban areas where you grow up. It all the matter, it's a matter of um, who you hang out with or, or what you intend to do with your life. Uh, in my neighborhood, there were no dancers. You know, uh, to dance was uh, to socialize, to go to the neighborhood party. Yeah, but when I found out what dance was, it became a whole new thing for me uh, and for the people around me. Okay, but how did you find out what dance was? How did dancing come into your life? <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, strange. Uh, it was uh, a gentleman walking down the street one day. It was a short fellow. Never forget him. And he grabbed me by my arm and took me up to my mother and he said, Your son should dance. Just look at those legs. Look at that kick. Look at that smile. He should dance. And he's what we call one of the solicitors for your neighborhood dance, dancing school. And off I went to, uh, to a dancing school. I didn't learn anything. I was in a class of maybe 500 kids who all had been solicited to the same school. And <laughs> we were all promised to uh, find television careers. You know, they would put you in front of a monitor and uh, sort of uh, sh show your face there on the monitor. And, and then they'd say, OK, see, see how good your kid looks? He's going to be on television. And we're going to make him a big star. And then you'd, you'd be in. It's like a cattle call. And I never learned anything, really, until I got to the high school for the performing arts. Well, but before you could go to the high school for performing arts, you had to audition. You had to really have the talent before, did you not? I had love for performing. I was a ham, you know, yeah. always a ham at heart. Uh, at home, my mother would have me perform for neighbors who'd come by and guests. Uh, uh, if there was a talent show, I would, I would go and do something on that talent show. I'd watch all the Elvis Presley movies and all the, uh, all the musicals <laughs> that were about during that time. And I would mimic the people I saw on the screen. Um, and I just enjoyed being in front of the people. Now, no matter, uh, it wasn't a technique, because I knew nothing about technique. It wasn't until much later. But it was just something in my heart that I wanted to do. Yeah. And, uh, and, that's what I, and that's what I did. OK, and your parents, when you said, hey, mom, dad, I want to dance. Yeah, well, mom, mom loved it. Dad sort of like this, sort of like turned it off. <laughs> he didn't uh, understand exactly what I meant by dance. You know, we, we, you know come on, you're going to buy you a Louisville slugger and you get you out there in the baseball field. But I, I wanted to dance uh, once yeah. I found out what it was. Okay, and obviously, you know, you, you are doing it and doing it tremendously. The High School for the Performing Arts, you did have to audition, did you not? Sure. Now, now, okay. that's, now, that, now that's a story in itself. You see, let me backtrack. Okay. I went to junior high school 35, left junior high school 35 and went to junior high school 178 because we moved out of that district. But before I left that school, there were two brothers called Lewis and Jim. I'll never forget them. They, uh, they were tap dancers, and I had never seen anything like it. They were on the line of, I say, the Nicholas brothers. Well, they did a number at this talent show off this table that just knocked me out. When I was transferred to junior high school 178, I tried to duplicate this number. I jumped off the table. I, I, just, I just taps all over the place. And my principal, uh, Benjamin Raskin, so he kept an eye on me while I was uh, in junior high school. And when it came time to uh, pick your high school, well, 
I wanted to go to aviation. I wanted a military life. I wanted to learn how to fly planes and, and do that whole scene. Uh, he felt I would have been wasting my talents and my time. So he set up the audition for the high school for the performing arts. So I went to the high school. I wore a pair of Bermuda shorts, uh, sneakers, a T-shirt, and a black hat. And I did a, a dance to a number called Killer Joe. And uh, surprisingly enough, I was accepted into the school. I was also accepted into the other schools. Uh, but Benjamin Raskin told me that I had failed. Uh, oh. in that applications and they did not accept me and I was only accepted into performing arts and uh, that's how it pretty much started for me. How lucky, <laughs> how lucky yeah. that that's where you were accepted. Is it true that the very first Broadway show that you ever were in was the first Broadway show that you ever saw? That's true. That's Sweet true. Charity. Sweet Charity. That's right. I, um, I had been in b b shows before, don't get me wrong, I had done The, the King and I I, I was in uh, uh, summer stock, which I feel is very important for performers. I mean, if you're going to get in this business, if you're going to do anything in this business, you got to know from the root of which it comes. And summer stock allows you that opportunity to get out there and, and, and rough it. You got to make your costumes. You've got to make the sets. You've got to choreograph your number. I mean, you, you're a part of the theater. So I had done summer stock. I had been off Broadway, but I had never seen a Broadway show. Uh, never seen a Broadway show. And finally, w one year when I was unemployed, and I was walking around the streets of New York, picked up a backstage and it said Sweet Charity I was auditioning for, to, for singers and dancers to go to Las Vegas with Juliet Prowse. I auditioned for the show and I met Bob Fosse. He asked me, he said, have you ever seen a Sweet Charity? I said, no. And he gave me tickets to my first Broadway show. Okay, I want to talk more about that. We have to take a commercial break because there's more, a, a little more to that story that I want to explore. But uh, we'll be back in a few minutes. We're talking <laughs> with well. Ben Vereen, and uh, we'll be right back after these messages. So please stay right there. We're back with my very special guest, Ben Vereen. We were just talking about Sweet Charity, uh, and that's actually where you met Bob Fosse. I read that the first time Bob Fosse saw you try out, he said, that's the man, and said to you, hey, let me know when you start cutting records because I want to buy everyone because you're going to be a big hit. <laughs> well, he didn't that, exactly okay. get that excited about <laughs> well, it. Well, it's, not, it's <laughs> not true. <laughs> but he, I tell you, he, he, it was more, he, see, Bob's a very subtle man, um, very quiet, very much to his genius is very within himself, and he expresses it through his art form. When I first saw Bob Fosse on the stage, I was impressed. Uh, because he was, um, he was a man who was uh, a dancer and a, and a director and uh, someone that I had never heard of before, but the type of image that I had always wanted to see in the theater and wanted to sort of like, uh, I guess almost fashion my life after in, in that form. But unless you see that type of person, you don't know what direction you're going to go in. When I first saw Bob, he never held his head up. He smoked his Campbell cigarettes and sort of like just walked around. The strange thing about him that amazed me and caught my eye was that he was the first man I saw who could ever dance with a cigarette in his mouth and the ashes never fall <gasps> to the ground. He was that, he's that smooth. And uh, that was very, it was really impressive. Yeah. And it was a cattle call, that audition. And, uh, what do you mean by cattle, cattle call? call? is when everybody in the city of New York and the suburbs and in the world come to the audition and you wait through hours and hours of auditions uh, I don't know how many people saw all that jazz his latest movie but a cattle call is the opening of the movie that audition is what they call a cattle call and you narrow it down into the people that you want for the show and I was fortunate enough to make the show out of thousands and thousands of people and when I did, when I sang for him matter of fact it was the first time I, I sang in an audition I was really nervous about it I sang a song called Blue Skies, and I remember Bob walking up and down the aisle, and through all the, uh, the, the singing auditions, he just walked up and down the aisle, never looked at the, the performer until I started singing, and he stopped. And he turned around and just looked at me and smiled. And then he said, would you sing an acapella? 
And I didn't know what the word acapella meant at the time, so I started screaming. <laughs> so they said, no, no, uh, just, just, sing, yeah. just sing it without music. Right. And, uh, uh, but that was, uh, that was our introduction. OK, you mentioned all that jazz. And uh, I did see the movie. I thought it was one of the finest movies I've ever seen. But one of the highlight of that movie, for me, was you. Oh, and thank you. it was the story of Bob Fosse's life. And I guess he must have felt that felt very special about the people who he asked to be in it. Did he tell you when he asked you to play that special role that it was going to be a story based on his life? Well, I pretty much knew he was developing uh, this story all the while uh, I was in Pippin. Uh, during that time, matter of fact, right after his heart attack, uh, he, he, he stated, he said, I, I'm, I'm going to write a, a book about it. He said, yeah. I want to do a film about it, um, that experience, because it, it is a, a heart attack is sort of a traumatic experience for anybody. Yeah. Um, and um, so I, I, I wasn't surprised. I was surprised when he asked me to do a part in the movie. That surprised me. Yeah, yeah. And, and it was terrific. And you were great. And anybody who hasn't seen it should go and see it. He also directed you, as you mentioned, in Pippin. Uh, you won yes. the Tony Award for Pippin. Uh, not only did you win an award for the play, you also won the, Cl won the Clio, which was the uh, award that the advertising industry gives for the best commercial. The yes, commercial matter of fact, it was the first, I must say, because the people who did the commercial must be credited. Um, it was the first commercial ever done for Broadway. Uh, and now you're getting lots of commercials for Broadway. And we opened that whole door, that whole avenue. So it was, you know, it was a, a first. Pioneers. Yeah. You know? okay. That's a good feeling. And it was terrific and one of the best. You got tremendous reviews in Pippin. Uh, I think it was the really? first time. You know, oh, I haven't, of course I haven't you read did. Them in oh, years. no, come on. No. <laughs> so but I don't but know. you did then. I, how did you feel? I mean, you must have felt great, but did it go to your head? Did you well, say whenever I get a good review, I feel good. Um, yeah. Because I, I, critics are very important to me, especially a good critic who gives good critique. It helps me as a performer. Um, at the time, we were just concerned about keeping the show open. And what happened was after we, we got great reviews and the show started ebbing off, uh, people started not coming. And we couldn't figure out why. And Bob came up with the idea and said, let's do a commercial. And the first commercial was actually a, um, an animation when using my voice. And the second, of course, was the one that won the Clio. Yeah, that dancing. And, and it picked up the business. It really did. People started coming in, and the show stayed on Broadway for years. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, after I left the show, I came back and, and did a week because the leading player who was doing the part at the time had an accident. And I, I said, OK, ah. I'll do it. And it was okay. fun. You know, I saw you on Broadway in Pippin. I also saw a road company. And for me, without you in it, it was like seeing a different show. I mean, you added so much to the show. Oh, but, but the role uh, itself yeah. is a type of role that every entertainer would love to have. The, he's sort of the interlocutor. He's, he sings, he dances, he acts. It has all the, all the elements you, you look for when you look for a role. Okay. All the things right. you do in real life. We have to take another break, though, now. <laughs> oh. We'll be right back. Okay. We're talking with Ben Vereen, and we're at the Sheraton Inn in Hazlitt, and uh, we'll be right back after these messages, so please stay right there. We're back with my guest, Ben Vereen. We were just talking about some of your experiences in Pippin. One of your first leading roles, though, was in Hair on Broadway, which you also received an award from in San Francisco as the best as the uh, best all-around performer. Yes, yeah, so in California. Yeah, the Critic which, Award. Yeah. Uh, that was actually it was in Los Angeles. We opened at the Aquarius Theater uh -huh. to a cast of thousands of stars, um, Hollywood stars, uh, on the opening night, and it was my first time actually to perform for celebrities and it was really strange swinging over them over a rope and yelling in their faces and walking over their faces you know to meet them for the first time and, and later now becoming quite uh, acquainted with them and friends and, yeah. and, you know and, and we laugh about it to this day remember that time you clammed over my face at the Aquarius Theater you know? <laughs> <laughs> how did you feel about that with all the celebrities? Well, I was quite nervous uh, yeah. you, all of a sudden you see the people that you have um, seen on the silver screen or on television or read about uh, who have influenced your life in some form or way or another. Their work is uh, you admire and, uh, and all of a sudden they're sitting there and they're, and they're, and they're touchable. 
right before you. Yeah, and you're touchable right before me. I kind of like that oh, <laughs> because well, you've you. been one of my idols, I have to say. Your talent is incredible. You can switch from role to role. You've done so many things. I want to be able to get as much as I can in because, I didn't, I, because you have done so much. But you went from here into a, a, a Pulitzer Prize winning play, um, No Place, no to, place be. to Be Somebody. Yes. Okay. Now from here you were playing a hearts and flowers kind of a person and in No Place to Be Somebody you were playing a pimp. Mm -hmm. Was there, how did you feel about the transition from one kind of a role into another? I'm an actor. Yeah. An actor has to be able to be, is it like clay, and you can mold himself into whatever direction he has to go or whatever he has to be. And so what I personally feel about it is that I hope I can make the transition well enough to convince my audience and for them to sit there and be entertained by the character that I'm playing. Yeah. So that's how, that's how I felt about it. Uh, the transition period was rough because um, I, it was one from one end to the other end, and uh, it was it was really a, a rough swing because I didn't have that much time to prepare for the character. Yeah. Okay. To prepare for the character of playing a pimp. A pimp. Okay. What did you do to prepare for a character playing a pimp? You find a pimp, <laughs> <laughs> and you okay. and you walk with him, and you talk uh -huh. with him, and you and you watch him, and you uh, ex try and experience. Uh, um, spiritually some of the things that he's been through in his life um, you try and get them to share with you and their walk and uh, and then you take it and you dress it on yourself and take some experiences in your life which are similar that you can tap upon and try and make that role work yeah. if that makes sense at all yeah oh yes yeah sure I um, the research that you do in all the different roles that you play for I assume that mm -hmm. that in, with each character you do learn something about them. When you played um, Chicken George in Roots, what kind of research did you do for that? Oh, God. well, a lot of soul searching and a lot of talking to the old folks. You know, I find that, matter of fact, most of my characters, you know, you talk to the old folks, they'll tell you everything you want to know. Um, there was a thing there for a while called the generation gap, and it was a shame because we lost a great deal of our history and our heritage. Uh, now we're we are grasping of the air to, to pull it back together after seeing Roots, you know, we're saying, well, now I'm going to go talk to my grandparents, or now I should think I should talk to that old person, but um, they are the key to our history and to our wisdom. Mm -hmm. And um, during uh, Roots, I spent a lot of time talking with the elderly and uh, getting into what had transpired in their life. And then I had to go back even further into my imagination and, and try and envision what it might have been like and then try and feel what it must have been like to be a slave and to be owned by somebody and to be Chicken George. Yeah. You know? Hey, you work so hard. I mean, in doing those things, you, you are now, uh, you have been performing at the Garden State Arts Center. Yeah. You're on television, as you mentioned. You're in the <laughs> movies. You uh, perform in nightclubs. You perform in theaters. Um, your schedule is incredible. You are going from New Jersey to, um, I believe, Las Vegas, from Las Vegas to the Concord Hotel in Kayamisha Lake, and then you're going to go to Atlantic City, back to New Jersey. I, you will be in Atlantic City, by the way. I did want to mention from uh, August 4th through August 9th. How do you keep at that Resorts kind of, International. At Resorts International, right. Right okay. on the boardwalk, looking <laughs> at the water. Okay. Can't wait. <laughs> okay. Oh, how do you keep up that kind of schedule? Aren't you tired? Tired? Uh, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> I, I say okay. no. I, yeah. I, you know, um, it's not, I don't want people to think that, you know, he's Superman because I'm not. I'm yeah. not. I, it's just that I love my work. I feel so blessed to be doing what I'm doing, to be doing what I enjoy doing. How many people in their life can say, I love my work? And, yeah. and so, therefore, I, 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 I can't get enough of it. There are times and periods, during the, you know, in the travel when you just feel exhausted. But once you step on that stage, or I step on that stage, yeah. it's, I need it. Yeah. I really need it. Oh, okay. Speaking of you on the stage, I saw you on the stage. Okay. Part of your, of what you did, um, is of what you do, not what you do, is you mingle with the audience. You go right out there, you dance with the ladies, you shake hands, you get kissed. Have you ever had any strange experiences result as, um, as a result of doing that kind of a thing, going right out there and mingling with the audience? No, you know. No? I get a few gropes, you know, <laughs> every now and then, but I don't, I don't get any uh, 
and he's straight, straight <laughs> that's strange, you know. And all of a sudden, you turn around and some lady is grabbing. But um, <laughs> it's uh, the people are wonderful, and you, you remember once again. You said earlier, I was a here child. I was a love child. I, I was into that uh, period. I was into um, let's come together and appreciate one another, and 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 learn to love one another and be a family. Un, un, under, un, under the Lord and I was really into that and I feel that I still feel to this day that we we need to touch each other more we need to reach out to each other and, and just say you know good morning how you doing today and just be closer to one another and, and that's a good feeling being out there among my friends among the people you know walking I've seen I've seen people totally transform before my eyes uh, uh, during the performance they'll come in with a problem and walk away feeling really good inside because somebody touched them yeah. And I care. Yeah. And that's why I do it, because yeah. I care. Yeah, that's a terrific message. Okay. We have to take time out now for another kind of a message. We're talking with Ben Vereen, and uh, we'll be right back after these messages, so please stay right there. <laughs> We're back with my very special guest, Ben Vereen. During the commercial break, I just learned something about you. You were a singing male boy at uh, United Artists Motion Picture Company. Where you used to yes. work. <laughs> okay, maybe you could have been at the same uh, time. It was probably at the same time. Okay, well, from the mail room at United Artists, you've obviously come a long way, okay? And you've done <laughs> so much. I almost want to say yeah. baby at the end of that. <laughs> baby, <laughs> you know. baby. No, that's right. <laughs> but, you know, you've done a lot. You're obviously going to do a lot more. But I read in a Time Magazine article that one of the things that you'd like to do is act in a Western movie where you could ride a horse, shoot a gun, and wear boots with spurs on the back that jingle when you walk down the street. Is that really well, what I don't need all that costume, okay. but, uh, but I tell you, I do want to do a Western, and I intend to do a Western, but I just don't want to do a Western for my own selfish ego. I want to do a Western with someone like, you know, a Clint Eastwood or a Charles you know, Bronson, you know, those, those type of people who, who are really hot. You know, I've always wanted to do, uh, I, when I first time I wanted to do a Western was when I saw Marlon Brando do One-Eyed Jacks, you know. I said, now that's my type of role, you know, and uh, so I've, I've always wanted to do those type of characters, and I will yeah. one day. Okay, yeah, no will. doubt. What are some of the other ambitions? What else? Um, haven't you had a chance to do that you'd like to do? Not necessarily professionally, just Well, I haven't had a chance to scuba dive in the Fiji Islands yet, so I intend to do that. <laughs> you know. Okay, but I yeah. heard that you wanted to learn <laughs> French, is really what I was leading up to. I also learn read French. That, that you wanted to learn French. Is that true? Um, I want to learn a number of languages, um, which I'm in the process of doing, just for the, man, the main fact of being able to uh, communicate in that language. Um, not too long ago, I had the honor of receiving the cultural award from the state of Israel for uh, doing a number in 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 Hebrew. You know, so. Ah, where did you learn that? Well, it was a part of the number that I was doing, and I, and it was the birthday of the uh, country, and I wanted to do something that they could relate to, and uh, I could have done um, one of my numbers from the show, but it was the birthday of Israel. So. Yeah. Okay, but that's another thing that's special about you. You have taken a lot of time to do things for charity, uh, for other people as well as, as do all of the things you have to do to work. How do you, I mean, I, I, I just think it's terrific. Well, when, when you, you know, when you are given a gift, when you go to the vault and you say, Lord, uh, I, I want uh, a talent. He says, okay, fine, I'm going to give you the talent, but you got to give it back in some way. And this is the way I give it back, is by helping people along the way. And you give of yourself in a very special way, and you've given me a great deal in being here on my I show. I feel like you have to go oh, now. Oh, yeah, we do, uh, regretfully, because well, there's so much more I, I got to know to you. you. About. <laughs> okay, and I really enjoyed getting to know you. I thank you very much for being here. Thank you. I hope that you have enjoyed getting to know Ben Vereen. I know that I certainly have, and I hope that you'll join us again next week. Meantime, good night. It's been a pleasure getting to know you. <laughs>